Hello and uh, thanks for tuning in again. Um, I've thought about the progression of the river flies and you know you could tie bugs now. I think the two that we've tied previously the they set you up to tie a lot of different varieties of bugs. So I'm going to leave the bugs now and I'm going to move on to wet flies and the first one I'm going to tie is a classic uh, and I do so with some fear because I don't fish them a lot and I don't tie them a lot. Um, Robert Smith's book The North Country Spiders a great reference for this. Uh, I don't have the original materials required for tying the flies traditionally but I'm going to make do with what I've got. So in the vise is the Hanak 260BL and it's at size 12. Um, these hooks come up quite small so um, it, it fits nice for a small river fly. The thread I'm going to use is the Beavis E16 which is a hot orange colour and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of wax just on the very tip of my thread. I don't want to get too much wax on this because it does affect the colour when I start to bring the thread up the shank. So I'm going to roll my bobbin up, so I've just got my little bit there and I'm going to catch it in, leaving about two two millimetres, an eighth of an inch at the front. Then I can take that down all the way just take my end away and stick another turn in to hide it and then I can simply come all the way touching turns back up the shank of the hook like so now when I get to here, what I'm going to do is just build a little mound of thread. If you've watched the still water videos, you'll see I do this at the end of my marabou tail flies to stop it spinning round the shank. And I'll come down to the end, like so. And the, and the reason for this is, when I hackle it, which I will do in a moment, um, it stops the feathers lying completely flat along the hook shank when it's been fished. What this will do is help splay the feathers out. So, next, we're going to, as the, the name suggests, partridge and orange, we're going to use some partridge feathers. Now, I usually use partridge from a cape that I have, but when I'm doing these, I like to use some of these select feathers. They're from Troutline, and they've been all pre-trimmed, and tidied up nice and neat. Now preparing your feather is key to this and it's quite awkward to show you on camera but I'm going to do my best. So you've got to grab the tip most part of the feather and then try and ease the other feathers back. Uh, sorry my fingers are in the way a lot but it's the only way you can do it. So, I've got my feather prepared. Now, if you go to a pub in Yorkshire, they'll argue night and day that it should be a bushy hackle, it should be a fine hackle. I know some lads like to strip off one side and just use one side of the hackle. Uh, I'm going to use the whole feather, but, you know, I'll probably get shot if spotted by a Yorkshireman. Okay, assassination aside, let's attach your hackle to the front of the fly. Now, before I do that, I'm going to give it quite a lot of wax to help get some purchase on the, on the feather. And I'm going to catch it in there. And I'm going to do one, two turns. Then I'm going to come in front, one, two and then I'm going to find my tag, it seems to have got a bit lost bear with me there it is 
and just release it. Now, while I was doing that, I should have mentioned I was always having tension on my thread. It's really important. If you let go, it will just um, go to pieces on you. When you rip away the, the end, that will come out. So at all times, you've got to retain tension. And it's a bit of a juggling act now. So you want to... You can't let go of your thread, but you've got to bring your hackle round. Now, how many times? How long is a piece of string? Some people would say, go until you run out of feather. Other people would say, one turn's sufficient. I'm going to do one turn on this occasion. And I seem to have got myself into a right pickle. I'm just going to move that away. And I'm going to give it another turn, just to hold it into place. Then before I do anything else, I'm going to sweep all my fibres back. And catch in three turns at the head. And then I'm able to take my tail end and remove it. Next then, should be a simple matter of building a nice neat head then coming in with a whip finish tool if you can use them if not a couple of half hitches will suffice then I can trim that away and a little spot of super glue on the head or a little bit of Sally Hansen's what I'm going to use just a touch what I like about tying them on these hooks is they're heavy enough so that the fly digs in I mean the, the wets are are used for fishing quite high in the water you will see some with um, beads on that will we'll do a job, but when I'm fishing wets, on the rare occasions I get up north and do that, I tend to fish them across for um, fish that are rising that I can't catch on dries. So there we have the partridge and orange, or my version of it. Um, I'll expect a couple of hard targeting exercises the next time I'm up in Leeds to see my mum. Uh, that went a lot better than I thought it would. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.